good morning everyone um, we will again begin with a new lecture on uh, solar in the in this course of solar photovoltaics principles technologies and materials so we'll just do a brief recap of what we did over last few lectures last in fact last lecture so in the last lecture we started learning about generation of carriers in semiconductors and recombination Generation is basically uh, you create extra carriers in conduction and valence band and this could be thermal. So, you can thermally excite the carriers from valence to conduction band so that you create more electrons in conduction band and holes in valence band and this requires that your thermal energy is higher than the band gap of the material. Similarly, you can have optical excitation wherein you throw in a radiation whose wavelength is such that so that in incoming energy is higher than the band gap and it excites the carriers. These are photogenerated carriers. So, this is photo excitation and uh, again uh, or you can have trap assisted. So, these are three uh, major methods of carrier generation and then you can have carrier generation uh, recombination. So, carriers not only in semiconductor because it is a dynamic process. So, not only you generate carrier you also recombine carrier. So, when carrier density becomes very large then there is a strong push for uh, recombination. So, recombination again could be a radiative recombination you can have non radiative recombination and you can have trap assisted recombination. So, these are the uh, methods that we saw. So, basically generation is to create extra carriers, recombination leads to loss of carriers and because of these two phenomena in addition to drift and diffusion, there is a net change in carrier concentration in the semiconductor which has to be analyzed which is what is useful in, in determining uh, the current in a uh, the electrical properties of a semiconductor device. And uh, finally, uh, we were look we were just beginning to do quantification of these uh, recombination generation statistics. So, this is what we will take on forward. So, we will so basically this is called as recombination generation statistics in semiconductors. So, we first define del n by del t and we say R g this is basically time rate of change in electron concentration. So, if you recall we earlier said N e is electron concentration N h or N p was the whole concentration right. These have been now modified to N and p. So, N is electron concentration and p is whole concentration. So, this is what we will continue with. So, del n by del t is time rate of change of electron concentration due to Rg centers. So, basically if it is negative when the electrons are lost and it is positive if the electrons are created all right. So, similarly you can have del p by del t again because of recombination generation. So, time rate of change of whole concentration okay due to Rg centers. So, this is where we were at the last. Uh, so, this is basically so when electrons or holes are trapped it is called as capture. So, this first term is called as capture which means carriers are captured okay, or lost and then another term is called as emission which means carriers are created. Okay. So, these are two terms which are often used in recombination generator statistics uh, jargon. So, let us say if we define n t small n t as number of R g centers uh, per centimeter cube which are filled with electrons 
and then we define another term capital P T as similarly number of empty R G centers per centimeter cube and N T capital N T is total number of R G centers which is N T plus P T per centimeter cube all right. So, this is the this is the assumption that we start with ok. Now, let me give you some idea about uh, an another condition that we follow in semiconductor is it is quite often used is it is not always applicable, but quite often it is useful is low level injection. And this we will discuss later what this condition is. So, you, you can have a low level condition, you can have a steady state condition. So, there are a few conditions under which recombination generation statistics. So, conditions for recombination generation statistics, we will see what these are. We cannot derive everything, but we will see the expressions that come about after these equations. Now, let us see first uh, what do we mean by recombination here first. So, let us say we have a semiconductor here. which has an initial concentration of you know n naught and p naught. So, you, you can also write it as if it is a n type semiconductor. So, let us say it is a case of n type semiconductor ok. Often you will you will also see a change in uh, terminology sometimes uh, when you write n n it is electron concentration in n type ok when you write n p it is electron concentration in p type. Similarly, when you write p t p p it is whole concentration in p type and when you write p n it becomes uh, whole concentration in n type. So, some of these subscripts will uh, appear later as we deal with both p and n type semiconductors together. So, let us say if this is the if we isolated if we discuss a n type semiconductor isolatedly it had some query concentration n naught p naught to begin with and then you create a perturbation ok. Perturbation is basically it means that you have you create it could be optical perturbation it could be thermal perturbation. So, this perturbation will lead to change in the minority carrier concentration see the problem the thing is since n naught is much larger than p naught ok. If you create any change the change does not affect n naught it affects p naught. So, let me give you certain numbers. So, let us say we have a semiconductor with n d is equal to 10 to power 14 per centimeter cube ok. This is subject to a perturbation such that so this is let us say n silicon all right. So, you create a perturbation so that delta p is equal to delta n is equal to 10 to power 9 per centimeter cube. Now, we know that if if n d is equal to this much then n is approximately equal to n d which is equal to 10 to power 14 per centimeter cube. So, you can see that since in n type silicon n is the majority carrier the perturbation is very small. So, you can see that delta p or delta n is very very small as compared to n, but it is now if you calculate what is p, p is n i square divided by n d and n i in this case turns out to be. So, this quantity all together turns out to 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube. So, you can see that this perturbation is significant in comparison to minority carrier concentration. So, in semiconductors whenever you carry out a perturbation, so it basically p injunction a solar cell is nothing but optical perturbation. You have something at equilibrium then you expose it to light suddenly a lot of carriers are generated and there are huge number of carriers in the semiconductors suddenly. So, this basically is a optical perturbation and this optical perturbation causes huge change in the minority carrier concentration that is why 
minority carriers are more important in terms of transport characteristics than majority carriers in semiconductors and that is why we are interested more in minority carriers than in majority carriers. So, suppose you carry out a perturbation in this and let us say uh, this delta p at some, so this is at t is equal to 0 at some t greater than 0 this delta p is smaller than delta p naught and after long time when it reaches again equilibrium this delta p becomes equal to 0. So, initially this delta p naught is very large when you create the perturbation it slowly dies down and then it completely fades away. So, this is at t tending to infinity. What happens in terms of the band knowledge? So, you have a semiconductor with conduction band and valence band. So, you have a semiconductor with valence and conduction band E c and E v. So, suppose you had created a perturbation. So, at the time of perturbation you have very large number of electrons in this. So, these are electrons okay. and you had a few holes here okay. and let us say it is a n type semiconductor. So, Fermi level is closer to conduction band and your trap level is somewhere here. Okay. This is your E t and this trap level is filled with electrons. Okay. So, what will happen in, in this case is, so this is let us say, so you have some electron to begin with P naught and then these are the extra electrons which are created delta P which is much larger than N naught. Okay. So, these are some extra you have created as a result of excitation. Now, what will happen in the system is, since this delta P fades away which means delta p gets. So, the electrons from the trap state will come and nullify these carriers if these trap levels are filled. Okay. If this trap level has sufficient number of electrons, these electrons can always come down and nullify the hole leading to annihilation of holes. And if you have sufficient number of carriers in the conduction band, these will also get filled okay, because the electrons from here if you you know if if you trap if 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 you have sufficient number of electrons in the conduction band they can always fall back to the trap center without making a much dent in the population of electrons in the conduction band however so when you have electron coming from here to here and electrons coming from here to here the e, the, the process is such that so that this that that the trap density at this remains virtually constant so whatever electrons leave this energy level to nullify with the holes which were created as a result of perturbation, they will get compensated by electrons falling from the top without making too much dent in the electron population in the conduction band because electrons are very large in number already. All right. So, what will happen here is uh, your number of, so basically you can say that change in hole concentration is directly proportional to the number of traps that you have present here. Okay. So, if you have nt number of traps here, it is directly proportional to the number of holes which get annihilated. So, you can write here. So, essentially you can say that uh, the basically you can say the greater the number of holes recombining per second, per second, when will this happen? This will happen when you have more holes which are available for recombination. Okay. So, when you have large number of holes available for recombination, the greater the greater is the recombination rate of these holes because more and more electron will jump from the trap level to uh, recombine these. So, you can say that. Uh, since the, the number of filled uh, RG centers, let us say number of filled RG center is approximately equal to N t, which is the these are the small N t, these are the electronic trap centers and 
we expect this rate of change of del p by del t r g to be approximately proportional to n t sorry small n t not capital N t because whatever the electrons are here they are the ones which are. So, if you do not have electrons here there will be nothing to recombine. So, if you have depending upon the number of traps you, your recombination rate will proceed. So, essentially you are not saying that all of them will uh, will recombine, but it is proportional to the number and recombination. So, basically if you have more the holes more the electrons will be jumping. So, in some sense the number of holes which are recombining here they are uh, the rate of those is proportional to number of electrons which are available at the trap level. So, you can say from this uh, let us say. So, you can say from this that uh, so this del p by del t we can say this is uh, r g you can have some thermal recombination as well. So, put together this will be equal this is proportional to small n t and this is equal to minus of c p n t delta p and this is for holes in a in a n type material. So, what is C p? C p is as we define it as it is called as uh, a proportionality constant n t is uh, the you can say the trap density n per centimeter cube and proportionality constant which is called as C p is called as uh, electron um, hole capture coefficient. Okay. So, this is hole in this case it is hole. So, hole capture coefficient and uh, delta p is essentially the, the change in the hole number. So, you can see that you can you can work out the units from this here. So, we will just we define this as uh, del p by del t as r p, r p is uh, del p by del t. Now, this is in negative. So, what you have here is you can say c p n t into delta p. So, minus sign I have taken here. So, I can define the rate r p as if you look at it in more detail the expression in more detail is as uh, uh, if so this is where I have made some uh, shortcut, but in reality the C p n t delta p is nothing but C p n t p minus E p uh, p t because your electrons are the holes or electrons are not only getting recombined they are also getting generated. So, essentially this term is equal to so this is this is this E p is nothing but hole emission coefficient and this p t is nothing but uh, number of. So, this is hole emission coefficient and p t we defined as uh, number of empty R g centers. So, you will always have some empty R g centers as well and p is the hole concentration. So, essentially what to simplify what we have done is we have just taken this as uh, 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 in order to simplify this you can just to do it as if you take C p as common this becomes p t n minus some other constant n 1 into n t sorry uh, p 1 into p hang on what am I writing. So, this is equal to um, C p into n t p minus some other constant p 1 into p t and this basically uh, and you can relate this this is written as an approximation as n t into delta p. Okay. So, these are some approximation that you make uh, for uh, these. So, essentially what I am coming to is you have if you look at in totality you have rate of electron 
change which could happen in p type semiconductor is minus of del n by del t r g this is taken as uh, minus c n uh, sorry plus c n n t delta n and r p is taken as minus of del p by del t r g you can also improve, improve thermal here is equal to plus c p n t delta p. So, this is for a uh, n type material uh, for a p type material and this is for a n type material and basically what it means is that both of these correspond to change in the changes in the minority carrier concentration because perturbations uh, cause major difference to to these they don't dent the majority carrier concentration so del so if you if you want to calculate rn for a n type it would be insignificant similarly rp for a p type it would be insignificant what is significant is the change in the minority carrier concentration when when this uh, happens so the condition which is followed in this is called as low level injection condition low level injection means for a n type material your delta p is smaller than much smaller than n naught and n is equal to n naught for a p type material it's other way around it's delta n which is much smaller than p naught and uh, p is equal to uh, p naught okay this is called as low level injection basically it just just says that the whatever the perturbation is it is small and the perturbation causes most mostly a difference in the minority carrier concentration not in the majority carrier concentration so we have these recombination generation there is other, other condition that often prevails is called as steady state conditions so uh, in the steady state condition um, i will not go into derivation but del p by del t for instance is equal to del n by del t thermal r g and this is equal to n p minus n i square divided by tau p into n plus n i plus tau n into p plus n i. So, I will explain what these taus are. So, in this low level injection condition uh, if you we define uh, uh, once we once we accept this low level induction condition we define a quantity called as tau p okay this tau p is uh, 1 over cp and t and tau n is 1 over cn and t or you can say pt okay what is uh, what is this uh, tau tau we define as time constant this is in second so you can see from the units here you are you are you are taking this as del n by del t del n by del t is per centimeter cube per second okay so if this is if one of this is per centimeter cube the other thing has to be uh, uh, so it, ha it it has to have a unit of per second all right 
So, that is why this unit of uh, this C P N T or C P C N P T is defined as 1 over tau n or 1 over tau p and these are called as. Uh, so, essentially you can say for a p type material del p by del t is a thermal R g this is equal to minus of delta p divided by tau p and del n by del t this is equal to minus of delta n tau n okay and these tau n's are the time constants and this is what leads this this then leads us to another condition which is the steady state condition in the steady state condition del p by del t is equal to del n by del t which is equal to n p minus n i square into tau divided by tau into n plus n i plus tau n into p plus n i and this happens when E t is equal to E i that is the steady state condition. I will not uh, go to uh, de uh, derivation, but if you want you can have a look at this advanced semiconductor fundamentals. volume 6 ok this is by uh, R P R A. So, in this uh, chapter 5 deals in detail with recombination and generation statistics. So, uh, this is what basically the recombination generation statistics in brief is there are other cases as well uh, which we can deal with, but we will we do not have time, but another. So, one is this trap assisted recombination, second recombination generally that happens is surface recombination. So, you can say this low level injection condition is the case 1. and a steady state condition is the case 2 which is when this E t is equal to E i and uh, uh, what it also means is that uh, basically R n is equal to R p in this case and tau n and tau p are essentially you can say these are time constants you can say these are hole or electron lifetime the time for which electron or hole is alive and these can be determined experimentally. So, uh, similarly so these are the lifetimes of carrier lifetime as we call them carrier lifetimes. Okay. So, these are different conditions that prevail inside semiconductor devices. Uh, so, now let us go to surface recombination. In the surface recombination, surface is important because every material has a surface. So, we are running out of time for this lecture. So, we will take up the case of surface recombination in the next class. Okay. Thank you.